Hey guys, my name is Shai and this is Evermind Astro. This video is Jupiter in Sagittarius, okay? Everybody loves it when Jupiter's in Sag. The transit anyway, right? <laughs> that That's like top of the market, everything's going big, we're blasting through limitations, right? And everything, it feels like it could be party all day, party all night, party all decade, right? Big, 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 big energy because <laughs> Jupiter likes to expand, Jupiter wants to go big, and when it is in its home sign of Sagittarius, this is a big, fiery, explosive. It is tuning into like, and capitalizing on all of the most expansive and explosive aspects of Jupiter and Sagittarius, because obviously both of these energies have softer, more gentle, more tempering type of sides, but you don't see a lot of that when they're together, right? You don't see a lot of that when they're together. So, let me uh, wind down, like take a step back for just a minute here. Because <laughs> I actually crinked my neck really bad just trying to set everything up for this video. <laughs> and that was such a sign to me because I, like, I have a thing with my left side of my neck. When I crank my neck like that on the left side, I, I'm always doing that when I'm overextending myself, when I'm rushing and overextending and kind of uh, being over impulsive and just like not taking a chill pill to just do things in a way that makes sense. It, it's when I overextend myself. So your guys' energy, the energy of Jupiter and Sagittarius definitely leads me personally anyway to kind of like be overly impulsive and overly overextend myself, okay, to the point where my body can't handle it. Now, if you're born with this placement, Jupiter and Sagittarius, or also this might resonate if you got Jupiter in the ninth, right? You probably have this inner capacity to do what other people might consider overextending yourself, right? But to you, it feels good. To you, it feels natural. To you, it feels like you do, you do not want to be limited here. You do not want to be caged in, right? You want to go, you want to, you want to like blast through those barriers, right? And I would say <laughs> there is a little bit on both sides of this because yes, you're, you're, you are in a human body, right? And you are subject to limitations and sometimes you have to slow down and sometimes you have to you know, take things a little easier, but that's not going to be an energy that you particularly enjoy. You're going to find that that feels like a lot of obstacles and like things trying to drag you down, right? Why is everybody trying to drag me down and tell, and tell me to slow down and tell me to be less impulsive, right? Because you've got places to do, places to do, things to do, people to see, places to go, all of that stuff, right? So you're likely to kind of gnash your teeth against those type of restrictions. And part of that is going to be because of your natural, natural, natural capacity to go beyond and push the, the limits, right? To really push the envelope and to even take on more, do more than other people, right? Because that's that's part of your natural, that's part of your natural energy. And it's even part of your purpose here to push the envelope in a certain, in a certain way. So the ways that this can play out, right? Money, spirituality, travel and higher learning, right? Those are the kind of, those are our, our general themes. There, There is like a, a side thing I could get into here about identity, okay, about identity and about how you could have multiple identities all kind of spiraling together with this placement, but that is quite specific and esoteric and I will just footnote that here. Some of you, this could be playing out in terms, something to do with your identity, okay? So, most people though kind of generally with this energy you guys like in terms of finances okay you guys could be the ones that break your family out of generations of poverty you guys could be the ones that create that generational wealth that could be through business right that could be through investing um you're likely, I, I think like if this is playing out financially for you, you could easily have a lot of ups and downs in your finances. I've seen, I know people with this placement, especially if you have um, like any of your inner planets conjunct Jupiter on this one, or if it's like really tightly involved, you know, with your, with your personal energy in some way, you could get your millions and millions and millions of dollars. You could have your success. You could get to the top, right? You could 
be on top of your game, be on top of the world. And that's a feeling that you guys like, right? Being on top of the world. You want to be on top of it all. And it's not be, and it has nothing to do with like looking down on others. And it has nothing to do with, it doesn't really have anything to do with other people, right? It, it's not against them. And it's just that you want to feel that you're on top because then you feel like you're alive and you're thriving and like you're on top of your game. And it's actually just about that's what feels good and natural to you, right? So this isn't like a mean or nasty energy at all. In fact, this energy can be quite generous and you can have all of this like wealth that you're building. You could be really sharing it with others and it could be a very, very, very generous placement, okay? But <laughs> there can be a lot of volatility here where you could kind of get it all and then lose it all and then build it back up again. So if you're watching this and you're in that kind of crash where maybe you've lost all of your money, if you build it up once before, you can absolutely do it again. And I, I promise you this because I know people who have done this, okay? Who've been on top, who've crashed to the bottom and have just done it all over again. And when you do it all over again, the second time, maybe even the third or fourth time, well, now you have the knowledge and wisdom that you need to not make the same mistakes, to not maybe overextend or to not conserve or to not put anything away for the future, right? So it's totally fine. It's part of this like massive volatility. So this placement, it could be really, really, really breaking an entire family out of generational poverty, that type of thing. You could be building generational wealth for your children. This could be, you know, a travel thing, right? You could, you could be one of those people that like go to every single country on the whole planet. You could just keep going. You could be like, <laughs> like traveling, maybe doing, you know, all of Europe and Asia on foot, people who do stuff like that, or you could be jet setting around the world. You could be even like houseboating around the world, like sailing around the world, stuff like that. Really a lot about travel and meeting, 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 exchanging energies with diverse energy, right? With diverse people and places. This could absolutely play out in terms of a travel thing for you guys. And then that's, that's, that's the interesting with the Jupiter and the Sagittarius is because it's finances or and or finances and or travel and you can easily see how finances and business and travel could play out together you could be traveling the world with your business right but some of you if you're if you're still watching this and this isn't resonating and you're like no i'm not really about money or even travel right hang in there <laughs> because there is an, a the alternative path for this one is spirituality and higher learning where this could be very very internal okay it could be very very internal where all this energy of going big and blasting off and gathering, 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 gathering. There is a gathering element to this. Some people, <laughs> some people with this energy could, you could have like a garage or an attic or a storage unit and it's just like full of stuff. Like, and I mean like, whoa. <laughs> and I mean, probably all of your stuff won't even fit in a garage or an attic or a storage unit. This is like, you, you could like... It, acquire and just getting and gathering and gathering all of this stuff that other people could be like, wow, I had no idea that you were a hoarder. <laughs> that's not everybody, obviously, but I, that, that's something that I do see with this placement for specific people. They just like to gather stuff because there's a lot of gravity going on here, right? So anyway, what if this is playing out entirely internally for you, right? What if this is internal? What if this is you traveling the inner spheres, right? Traveling the cosmos. You guys could be really fantastic and skilled at astral travel. And that is why there's such a divide on this because if you're somebody who is with this placement and it's very concrete, you're like, you know, you're into business, you're into finance and you're into just the whole concrete world, that's one path. And then the other path is this is all invisible. It is all energetic. It is all inner and esoteric where you are traveling. Like you could be projecting out of your body, you know, doing astral travel that way. You could be having, you could have a fantastically rich, imaginative inner world. And this could be active, you know, where you're building fantasy worlds in your mind. It could be passive where you're in your dreams and it's like, whoa, what is like, <laughs> every time I go to sleep, I like go to a different universe, right? And you could be gathering knowledge and wisdom and information specifically like you could, especially when you're like, you know, in the kind of university college phase of your life, you could be really into philosophy or psychology or English or history, um, anthropology, right? I mean, technically, sure, you could also be into the sciences as well. Obviously, there's going to be people with this placement who are into the sciences, but it tends to be more, I would say, like in and of itself, more generally, just about acquiring this and exploring, right? Exploring, exploring, exploring different types of knowledge and wisdom. And I think throughout your life, you're going to start to 
filter and filter and filter it and it becomes less as you get older about acquiring like what the sages have written in the books right <laughs> or you know the, the the philosophers have written in the books or the, what the PhDs have written in the books right and it's going to be more about okay now that I have explored all of this now I'm going to be creating my own wisdom like really distilling it all down right really really distilling it all down that can be playing out in terms of, you know, academic intellectual type of learning and or the spiritual learning where you guys could, you could even do a thing where you go through many, many different religions, right? Especially when you're younger, you could be, you know, maybe like raised Christian and then, you know, convert to Buddhism and then get into Wicca or something like that. And then it's like you could do a whole different thing. You could even be getting involved in different groups that really practice this, right? Instead of it being more... Um, I would say this is if it's like really, really aspecting something physical to do with your chart, like your embodiment, right? Your embodiment or your social scene. You could really get involved in like physical groups, like going to places that do this. I know a lot of us watching these videos, our, our spirituality tends to be very like on the internet, right? Like we don't actually, it's like divorced in some way from our physical life, not necessarily our physical life, but our kind of social scene, right? Where we get all of our interaction with other people that are interested in spirituality, all that kind of spiritual socializing tends to happen entirely online because maybe we just don't know anybody where we live, where we can do this. But I would say there is a potential for some people with this placement, especially if it's somehow aspecting your embodiment, somehow like if it was in the first house or something, or maybe even the 11th house, where you could would actually be connecting with people going to a lot of like group events, maybe even going and living in a commune or something like that, where you can really explore different types of spirituality, like actually living it, right? Actually doing it. So at the end of this, guys, your lifelong journey, right? At the end of this, you are going to be the sage, right? Of whatever it is, like whatever theme this was for you in your life, whether it was finances or business or travel or academics or spirituality, right? You are going to be the one that is now like divesting the knowledge. This is like passing on your wealth to the next generation, passing on your business to the next generation, passing on your knowledge to the next generation, passing on your spiritual wisdom to the next generation. And you can see like, that's like right at the end, end of this. And I would say maybe even if you have Jupiter at the very final degrees of Sagittarius, right? Like especially like an anoretic Jupiter, 29 degrees Sagittarius, because that is coming right into Jupiter and Capricorn. And that is about the, like the divestment of your legacy, okay? And in, into the physical and the concretization, the materialization of your legacy into the physical. So I don't wanna, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna film that video right after this one <laughs> um, because they, they, I do see them like bleeding together, right? Jupiter and Capricorn is quite different, but it's like set up by the Jupiter and Sagittarius. So <sighs> my point is if you happen to be on the cusp or if you happen to also have a bunch of Capricorn energy, there could there there's gonna be more and more and more of an emphasis about passing all of what you have gathered on later in this life because it can be a little bit of this can be very very like pie in the sky right Jupiter and Sagittarius it could even be kind of this energy of imagine you invested in something maybe like in stocks or in cryptocurrency or something right and it's like up 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 and you're like whoa I've made like millions of dollars but you don't, but you haven't cashed it out yet so it's just theoretical it's just numbers on the page right it's just numbers on the page that's where this energy could run to some trouble when you've made your 10x on your investment or like whatever it is you've made your profits you've made your profits right I would say one thing that this placement will need to learn is to actually take the profits off the table actually to take the money off the table at. because what happens if you you make all your profits and then the market crashes because here's the thing guys what happens after Jupiter is in Sagittarius when the when, when like everything's high 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 Jupiter moves into Capricorn, which is like crash. And this is, don't take financial advice from me, guys. Don't, don't do it, okay? But this is not financial advice. But if you look, if you look, correlation between like the, the financial markets, right? But the Ju Look at the Jupiter cycle. Markets tend to be up when Jupiter is in Sagittarius, and then they tend to crash hard Jupiter in Capricorn. Just, just, just look up the transits for yourself, okay? <laughs> Think, um... 2008 and 2020. 
Okay, just that's that is definitely a trend and that, that's pretty well known, right? People tend to people tend to know about that. So that is kind of the one little I would say the lesson of Jupiter and Sagittarius is when everything is going really, really well and when everything is up and it's not just about money, right? This is like your life in general. Don't forget to actually materialize some of that to actually take some of that off the table because the 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 thing that Jupiter and Sagittarius that the energy will try to tell you is that everything will be up and up and up and up forever and ever and ever as if the cycle is broken and everything will go 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 forever and ever and ever but of course that's not the case everything moves cyclically at least in my view, my understanding, everything is a cycle, right? Everything is a cycle. So when, every, when you're at the top of the cycle, right, don't forget to remember that it's the top of the cycle and the dip is coming. So make sure to do whatever you need to do to take your profits financially or just energetically, right? Just energetically to energetically take those profits and use them and turn them into something real so that they don't disappear, right? So that they don't disappear. So yeah. I'm now in the vibe to do the next one, like the Jupiter and Capricorn video, which is going to be pretty cool. So I will see you all in the next one. Check out my links down below. I'll talk to you later. Bye.